Hi, my explicit listener. It gives us great joy to come your way today. We are pleased to welcome you to Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. Ghana, Voice of Hope. This is Daylight Magazine. On today's program, we have live songs, life experience, and a moment of truth. I am your presenter for today's program. My name is Jeffrey Agbodo. It is now time to listen to a delightful song. I'm 
I have decided to follow Jesus and there's no turning back for me. This is what the song says. You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. Throughout life, man has gone through different phases of realities and experiences. Out of these experiences, the Christian is drawn closer to God. To draw lessons from Christian experiences, sit back as we present to you Life Experience. Hello, my wonderful listener. You're welcome to Life Experience. I am Nitreen Amu. I'm still having a chat with Esther, and she's still going to tell us what she went through during the Liberian War. Did you see people killing people, people yeah. raping people, anything like that? Yes. With the case of rape, I didn't see it, but with the killing, I saw a lot. On the occasion where we were, where they took us to the Jeanette time one evening, the town was overran by some soldiers, you know, go on, go on. with some you know, soldiers that was because we were in the Sarani of MPFL rebel, that is the Chastida rebel, mm-hmm. and they were also saying that the town has been overran by some other fashions group, that is the Unimo group, and they caught a guy saying that he's a part of the Unimo group and he has come to spy on them. He came on a reconnaissance job and work or so that. So they caught this guy and just murdered him on the town square, slaughtered him just like that. And a house closer to our house where we were, they took the guy. One of the soldiers has the guy head in his palm, took it to the nearby house. He had the guy's head? Head in his hands and took it to the nearby house just close to ours and was asking our neighbors there to give him some water to wash his hand because it's just from slaughtering an animal. That was the comment that he made. What do you do at that time? You have to, whether you like it or not, you will have to. And another occasion was when a MPFL leader, so to say, by the name of Gabe Singh, he was such a rude guy. Every time he's passing, it's like nobody crosses his car. You, you dare not do that. And if you do, and you are hate or got to get killed by his car, whatever. The family of that person will have to compensate him for killing or what, I don't know. And it was an occasion where he was coming from his residential home, going to another place, and a, a little boy was crossing the street. He got hit by his car. He compared the parents of that little boy to wash his car and then wash his feet and on top of it, take their dead body to go and bury it. Another incident, if I can remember, was also four guys. I think they were noted to have stolen somebody's acting. They was caught, just line them up on the f- football park and just shoot them. They just shot them? Just shot them. Like that? Just, just like, like that. that? Just like that. So what, what did you do? When, did you see the people dead? Yes, because for us, where we were wasn't far from the market. From the park, spread, okay. And also from the park. Okay. So I saw all that. So now how does it feel like when you see a dead body? Do you feel anything <laughs> when you see somebody dead? I feel scared, but it's not that much because I've seen it a lot. You've seen a lot of dead bodies, yeah, so we, do, we don't really care about dead bodies yeah. anymore. That just makes me to know human being, we are nobody. It's just life. When it's taken away, <laughs> yeah, nobody. <laughs> that is interesting. So after that, what else did you did you go through after that park incident? What else did you go through? Well, we were there like always. Like, the attack is off and on. 
Sometimes you just wake up, you are, the time is attacked. You have to run. And after a while, they'll call you people back. You have to come back. So it's like hustling, hustling here and there. But 1994, things ceased. Everything, the situation there was put under control. Charter that was completely in control of everywhere, every part of that place. That's Banga, um, Bone County. He was in control of that place and everything was okay by then. But we could not stay. My sister decided to take us back to Monovia. After a great while again, we started hearing people saying that ah, this place is not safe. The Unimo rebels are also coming back to get the place that we have to move. That uh, So my sister decided to take us back to Monovia. So 94, we moved over to Monovia. And we was welcomed back home. They say taken care of by some family members. We got there till my sister got one or two things set and then we're able to move back on our own and she has been the one there so far. And then the war was over. Yeah. What happened to you? Were you still in Monrovia or you moved out? Yes. 94, we're still in Monrovia, but that was not the end of the war. It was just the beginning of another trouble. 94, things were okay. Five, I started my schooling again. 95, I just jumped straight to primary five because of my age. And then I started going to school. 96, another attack on Monrovia. So that one we call it in our country is April 6 war. It was on the April 6 morning when the whole of Monrovia was all ran by rebels. And they were saying that, I don't know, the transitional government by them was like they don't need that government. So some say they want to take hold of the mansion, that um, there was another war. But by the, for us, we didn't move from where we were. That one lasted for some months, and after it, it ceased down. And I continued my schooling up to Jesus 1, when I left to Ghana. That was in 1999. Okay. So you were in Ghana in 1999. Mm-hmm. You were listening to Esther sharing her experience as young as she was. The experience she had during the Liberian War with us, she's telling us some details as well. Now, Esther, when you came to Ghana, how was life like? And then um, who were you living with? Did you come with your parents or you came alone? Um, well, I came with my cousin. He's now to another country. He went for me to come to school in Ghana. But when he was leaving, he left me with a lady called Rebecca. And she's like, she's taking good care of me, but she's now back in one of you. So I was also level another friend of hers. She's the one looking over, <laughs> taking care of me over here. I see. So where's your sister she's, and your mother? My sister is in Liberia. My mom is also there. Are they together? Yeah, they are. Okay. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It's really scary mm-hmm. listening to all these things that happened to Esther. I guess we're learning from it and we'll all shun away from all forms of wars. A continuation of this chat with Esther will be brought to you later. You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine. Coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Voice of Hope. We will bring you joy. Keep hope alive. You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through awr at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, 
can call us on 233-20-870-4532. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. They tell me Jesus died for my transgressions. That he paid his precious price. What is happening? They tell me Jesus died for my transgressions. And that he paid the price a long, long time ago. He gave his life for me on a hill called Calvary. But there is one thing else that I want to know. Does he still feel the nails every time I face? Seems that I'm so good at breaking promises And that I treat His precious grace so carelessly But each time He forgives What if He relieves The agony He felt on that tree God, all things are possible, and without God, we can't achieve anything meaningful. For this reason, it is prudent to listen to and apply the Word of God in our lives. 
please let's listen to the word of God on moment of truth. Brothers and sisters, you are welcome to the moment of truth. And we are going to study the Bible this moment. Our Bible discussion here is captioned, The Power of God. We believe that God is the only one who has the power over every situation in our lives. And we'll read something from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, which tells us that, Come all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God is telling us that we should all come to him, all we who are heavy laden, and he will give us rest. That is the promise our Lord Jesus Christ, through God, has given to us. And friend, I want to tell you that God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, that is Psalm 46 verse 1 to 3. It's also given us a promise that God is the power over every situation in our lives. These storms can be our financial problems. These storms could be our academic problems. These storms could be our relationship problems. And Psalm 46 verse 1 to 3 is telling us that, God is our refuge and strength and a very present in time of trouble. That is, he has the power over every situation in time of trouble. And the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat upon the house, but it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And that rock that this house was founded upon is God, our God, who we are supposed to serve. That is Matthew chapter 7 verse 25. God is the strength. God is the rock on which we build all our problems. We have to put all our problems on the rock, which is God, in order that we will have solutions to these problems. Each and every one of us here, regardless of our status, we all have our individual storms, winds, floods, as well as in our lives. Some of these storms could be the following. That is, as I've mentioned previously, that financial problems, academic problems, relationship problems, health problems, emotional problems. There are many at times we face financial problems in our lives. We as students, we as workers, we need money, we need finances in order to finance our endeavors in our education, in our field of work. It is for this factor that we need God in our lives in order to provide for us, in order to give us all our needs. In terms of academic problems, we study, but we don't get what we study. We are able to learn, but when it comes to assessments, we fail. We do not give our best. It is at this moment that God comes into our lives as our rock and allows us to put our problems on him as a rock. That will never fail us. In terms of relationship, we have so many problems. We get friends for a moment, and before we realize, these friends leave us. We don't know what we do, but it is left to us to ask from God in order to give us the power, in order to give us the reason, in order to give us the mind that we'll use in order to move with these friends. We make so many friends in our lives who in turn bring negative effects to our lives but the rock is telling us that god is telling us that we need to come to him in our relationships that we will be able to stand firm in our relationships that whatever any friend of ours would plan even negative he would have the power to change it to positive in our lives somebody say amen health problems. We have health problems in our lives. Many of us have so many health problems in our lives, but we don't know how we solve them. We go to hospitals here and there, but there are no solutions. But God is telling us that he is the only one who has solutions to problems. He has solutions to our health problems and has the power to heal anyone who is suffering from any health problem. Emotional problems as well come into our lives due to our imaginations, due to how we think. But the Bible is telling us that 
no matter how our emotional problems may be, we have solution to them in the Bible. God has solution to our problems. Now, there are so many problems in your life, not regarding to what I've just mentioned, but you have realized so many problems in your life. God is telling you that despite the fact that you haven't heard any of yours mentioned, you still have solution to them through him. And he is the only one who is going to get solutions to such problems. He is telling us that he knows the minds of all of us. He knows the minds of all his creatures. He knew us before we were even conceived in the wombs of our parents. Therefore, why don't you submit your problems to him? For he is the only one who has solution to them. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 tells us, Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. For we, your children, have gotten this opportunity once again to have the faith in you that you are the only one who has the power, who has the strength to do whatever you want in our lives. Father Lord, we pray that take absolute control in our lives. Take your rock in our lives. Build your rock in our lives. That, oh Lord, we will be able to overcome all kinds of temptations, all kinds of problems in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. are kindly hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. Hey, Ghana, Voice of Hope. You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley View University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through awr at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on 23320-870-4532. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. Today's program was presented by Jeffrey Abodo. Stay blessed.